Oh, if I can tell you a story. I was flying in an AWACS, a military aircraft capable of detecting aircraft to a range well beyond the horizon. We were flying over the Adriatic Sea between Italy and Yugoslavia and watching the NATO planes as they returned from the mission to the north of Kosovo. The array of fighters and bombers flew back through Yugoslavia as it was known then. We saw a glimpse of an aircraft detected from Belgrade. This was their capital city. The aircraft quickly climbed up and made orbits of its city its home. A pair of NATO fighters were quickly manoeuvred closer. I was told to identify the aircraft over Belgrade. Through a range of sources, we concluded that this was enemy. And so its symbol on our screens turned to red. The fighters were told to engage. Uh, over the radio, we were told that they could see a fireball and detections on our screen disappeared. You might have expected elated cries within the aircraft, but no. We had trained for years for this moment, and now we had seen the reality of war. The return to base was unusually quiet, with few people chatting. Upon landing, we were told that a parachute had been seen. That day was the Orthodox's church, Easter Day. The war films may tell you something, but this to me is what war is about. The irony of it occurring on Easter Day, the day of hope. Was this the war to stop all wars? Hello. Liz Daly from Clybank here. Remembrance is important to me on a personal basis because I lost two great grandfathers in World War I. My grand's dad and my granddad's dad um, were both killed in action and their bodies are still in Belgium and celebrated on a memorial but they have no graveyard nowhere where we can visit and these names were not spoken in my childhood and it's only in my adulthood that I've discovered the truth about these brave men my great granddad lost two of his brothers as well so that was three sons his mum gave up to fight for peace and that's why it's really important to me. What does Remembrance Sunday mean to me? My immediate answer that it's not a way of glorifying war, but it's an opportunity to stop and remember not only military losses, but also the civilian casualties that are as important to remember. My first real memories of Remembrance Sunday are of attending church parades when in the Life Boys in the local parish church in Carn Wardrick and in the Boys Brigade Company section at Port Shaw's in the 1950s and 60s. The churches were always very well attended on these days. My first memory of the human cost of war came from looking through a book my dad had from the Second World War that was, I think, entitled The War's Best Photographs and they were all the photos were in black and white. The image that struck me most was not of marching soldiers, a column of hundreds of tanks, or bombers dropping bombs, but was a photograph of bodies of Russian civilians strewn on steps in St. Petersburg. The civil war in Yugoslavia and conflicts around the world over recent years and the recent attacks on civilian targets in Ukraine have only added to this view. Homes can be rebuilt, roads relayed, and bridges restored, but the families of the casualties must live with their loss forever. Although never having served in a regular army, I was in the Royal Corps of Transport, TA, for 10 years in the 1980s, and there were regular NATO exercises in Western Germany that we to pa took part in because of the Cold War. We were one, on one occasion meant to be transported to Northern Germany on the Royal Fleet Auxiliary Vessel St Galahad. In the end, we went by civilian ferry, as the Galahad had been sunk in the Falklands War with a large loss of life. 
The television footage was extremely graphic and extremely harrowing. A colleague of mine who I worked with for over 40 years lost his son in the first Gulf War while serving in the Royal Scots. It was a shocking time for everyone at work, but we could only imagine how he, his wife and family must have been suffering. One of our favourite places to visit is the National Memorial Arboretum in Staffordshire. There are memorials to various military and civilian organisations and events as well as memorials on a smaller scale from people who have lost loved ones in tragic circumstances. One of these is a Gulf War Memorial and the first time I went to it and saw my colleague's son's name it left me with a real sense of loss and I ended up in tears. Every time I have visited since it has had the same effect on me. On Remembrance Sunday I always hope and pray that politicians remember the human loss in any conflict and they will be stopped committing their nations to war for personal or political game or in the belief that their people are better than their neighbours living on the other side of an imaginary line on a map. I finish with a few lines for our song Roses in December by Ian Walker, it's a Scottish folk singer. It was written after the Falklands War and it's about a young woman's love that is lost in the conflict. And when leaders say they should have talked, I just broke down and cried. Why did they not start talking before he had to die?